Now we're at lesson 4.11. We're going to divide by one digit numbers and check our answer with multiplication. If you missed how to divide by a one digit number, you need to see video 4.10 so you don't become lost or confused. We can divide multi digit numbers and check our answer with multiplication. Division and multiplication are inverse operations that undo each other. Inverse operations are opposite operations. Here we have 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. And 6 is our dividend, 3 is our divisor, and 2 is our quotient. And to check our division, we multiply the quotient by the divisor. And if the product is equal to the dividend, we did our division correctly. We just use the quotient and the divisor as our factors, and then the product 6 will be the same thing as the dividend if we did it correctly. We can use this method to check any size quotient. Here we have 75 divided by 5, and we did our division and found that the quotient was 15. To find out if we're right, we do 15 times 5 the quotient times the divisor. And we do 5 times 5 is 25. We regroup the two tens and put the five ones down. We do 5 times 1 is 5 plus the two we regrouped is a 7. We get 75 for our product. And it's the same thing as our dividend. We know we did it correctly. Emma saved $624 in May, June, July, and August. If she saved the same amount each month, how much did she save each month? Well, May, June, July, and August is four months. So we need to divide the 624 by four. We write our division problem. We have $624 divided by four. And we ask ourselves, how many times can four fit into six? One time. We write our one up here. Four times one is four. We do our subtraction and get a 2, and now it's the 2's turn to come down. Now that the 2 came down, there's a 22 here. We ask ourselves, how many times can 4 fit into 22? Well, 5 times, because 4 times 5 is 20. We write the 5 up here, we write the 20 here, we do our subtraction and get a 2. It's the 4's turn to come down. And now we ask ourselves, how many times can 4 fit into 24? six times because four times six is equal to 24. We write the six up there, the 24 here, we do our subtraction and get a zero. So our quotient is $156. To check it, we just multiply $156 times the divisor four. We do four times six, which is 24. We regroup the two and put the four down. Then we do 4 times 5, which is 20, and add the regrouped 2. That's 22. We regroup that 2 and put that other two one, the other 2 down here. We do 4 times 1 is 4. We add the 2 that was regrouped. That's 6. And we get $624. And that was our dividend. So because our product from checking it was the same as our dividend, we know it did it correctly. So we know Emma saved $156 each month. Now if you're lost about doing multiplication with regrouping, we're in chapter 4. That was from chapter 3 and there's a link to that video in this description. You really should know how to do that by now. Now in the last video we watched 4.10, we talked about placing the first digit in the quotient and I went into very much detail. So if you missed it, you really should watch it. So here's a quick review if you did watch it. We have $624 divided by 4. We think, how many times can 4 fit into 600s? And we think, well, 100 times 4 is 400, so it'll fit in 100 times. So we write a 1 in the hundreds place. See? We multiply the 4 times that 1, and we write it here and do the subtraction and get a 2. And now it's this 2's turn to drop down. Now we drop down this second digit, the 2, and ask ourselves, how many times can 4 
fit into 22? Well, 5 times 4 is equal to 20, so 5 times. We put the 5 up here. We write it in the tens place. Then we do the subtraction. 22 minus 20 is 2. And then it's the 4's turn to come down. And we drop that third digit down, the 4, and ask ourselves, how many times can 4 now fit into 24? Well, 6 times 4 is 24, so we put our 6 up here as our partial quotient. 6 times 4 is 24. We write the product here and do our subtraction, and we get a 0. There's no remainder. So, if this is very confusing to you, you need to see video 4.10 because I give a full description of what's happening with the hundreds place, with the tens place, with the ones place, with the partial products, all of that, okay? A shoe company wants to ship 7,254 pairs of shoes to seven stores. And if each store will get the same amount of shoes, how many pairs of shoes will each store receive? So we need to divide 7,254 for the pairs of shoes by seven for the seven stores. We start by asking ourselves, how many times can seven fit into seven? One time, so we write a one above the 7. And 7 times 1 is 7. We write the product here, do our subtraction, and get a 0. Now it's the 2's turn to come down. We ask ourselves, how many times can 7 fit into 2? 0. It can't fit into 2. So we write a 0 as our partial product. And 7 times 0 is 0, so we write the 0 product here. We subtract again, bring the 2 down, and it's the 5's turn to come down. We ask ourselves how many times 7 can fit into 25? Three times. We write the 3 up here. 7 times 3 is 21. We write the product here and do our subtraction. We get a 4. Now it's this 4's turn to come down. We ask ourselves how many times can 7 fit into 44? Well, 6 times because 6 times 7 is 42. We write the 42 here. We do our subtraction and we get a remainder of two. So each store will get 1,036 pairs, but there's going to be two pairs of shoes left over. We can check this by multiplying our quotient by our divisor. We do seven times six, which is 42. We regroup the four and write the two down. We do seven times three, which is 21, plus four more is 25. We regroup the two, put the five down, we do 7 times 0, well that's 0, but we need to add 2. We have 0 plus 2, well that's a 2. Then we do 7 times 1 is 7. We have 7,252, but we're not finished because our dividend was 7,254. We need to add that 2 remainder. We get 7,254, it matches our dividend, so yes, we have the correct answer. So after we multiply the quotient and divisor, we need to add any remainder that is here. Then we'll get our full product and it should match the dividend, okay? If you're ever checking your division with multiplication and you don't get the same number as the dividend, check to see if there was a remainder you were supposed to add. Maybe you did do your math correctly, you just forgot to add the remainder. Division and multiplication are inverse operations. We can use multiplication to check our answer to a division problem. We multiply our quotient by the divisor. If there's a remainder, we add it to the product, and the result should equal the dividend. Here we have 14 divided by 5. We ask ourselves how many times 5 can fit into the 1, and it can't. So we're going to include the second digit, the 4, the four so we have a 14. How many times can 5 fit into 14? Hmm, 2 times, because 5 times 2 is 10. We write our 2 up here in the correct place value. We don't write it above the 1 because we didn't put the 5 into the 1. We put the 5 into both digits, so we're going to write it above this place value. We subtract our 10 and get a 4. We have 2 remainder 4. To check it, we multiply the quotient 2 times the divisor 5. That's a 10. We add the remainder 4, it's 14. Yes, it matches our dividend. We did it correctly. 
And remember that we can turn our paper sideways to keep our place values lined up. Mixed up place values and sloppy writing are common mistakes for math errors. If you saw this and you wrote this in a very long division problem and you didn't remember what the number was, you'd have to do the math again to figure out what you wrote because you can't read your own writing. Or maybe on your homework or on a test, the teacher can't read your writing and marks it wrong because she thinks it's a different number. Is this number a 76? Is it a 16? Is it a 10? Is it a 70? It's hard to read it. What if you saw this? Is this a 39 or a 34? Is it a 59 or a 54? It's very hard to read it, so make sure you write very clearly and make sure you keep your place values straight. So here we have a couple more examples. We have 605 divided by 2. The first thing we do is ask ourselves how many times can 2 fit into this 6? Three times. We write the 3 up here, and 2 times 3 is 6. We do our subtraction and get a 0, and now it's this 0's turn to come down. We ask ourselves, how many times can 2 fit into 0? It can't. It fits in 0 times. So we put a 0 up here. And 2 times 0 is 0, so we write that product here. We do subtraction again, and 0 minus 0 is 0. Now it's the 5's turn to come down. We ask ourselves, how many times 2 fits into the 5? Well, 2 times 2 is 4. We write the 2 up here and the 4 product down here. We do our subtraction. We get a 1. We have 302 remainder 1. So when we subtract, like right here, and the difference is less than the divisor, 0 is less than the divisor 2, we just put a 0 as the partial quotient and move on to the next number, drop the next number down. And here we have 126 divided by 3. We ask ourselves, how many times can 3 fit into 1? Well, it can't. So we include the second digit. How many times can 3 fit into 12? Four times. We do 3 times 4. We write the 4 up here. And 3 times 4 is 12. We subtract to get a 0. And we drop the 6 down. How many times can 3 fit into 6? Two times, because 3 times 2 is 6. We subtract to get a 0. We have no remainder. And because it didn't fit into the first digit, we included the second digit of the dividend. Okay? Sorry about my focus. There we go. Now, we have a word problem with a table of information. So let's look at this table of information first. It says the garden shop, and it's got items and prices. It says a maple tree is $35, a boxwood shrub is $32, they're selling rose bushes for $38 and tulips bulbs for $2. And the word problem says Mr. Park bought 10 boxwood shrubs and 100 tulip bulbs to plant in front of the two apartment buildings he owns. How much did he spend for each building? Well, he bought 10 boxwood shrubs and they're $32 a piece, so we need to do $32 times 10. We can think of the basic fact, 1 times 32, which is 32. We have a 0 in the factor, so we have a 0 in the product. That's $320 for boxwood shrubs. It says he bought 100 tulip bulbs. They're $2 a piece, so we have $2 times 100. That's $200 for the tulip bulbs. We add the price of the boxwoods and the tulips together and get $520. We need to find how much he spent for each building, and he has two buildings. So we need to divide 520 by 2. We ask ourselves how many times 2 fits into 5? Two times, because 2 times 2 is 4. We write our 4 here. We do the subtraction, get a 1. It's this 2's turn to come down. We ask ourselves how many times 2 fits into 12? Six times, because 2 times 6 is 12. We write the 12 here. A 6 up here, we do our subtraction and get a 0, and now it's this 0's turn to come down. We ask ourselves how many times 2 can fit into 0. It can't. It fits in 0 times. So we put a 0 as our partial quotient, and 2 times 0 is 0. We subtract 
0 minus 0 and get another 0, the answer is $260 for each building. So when we subtract, and the difference is less than the divisor, 0 is less than the divisor 2, we just put a 0 as the partial quotient. If we're in the middle of the division problem, then we just drop down the next number. When it's the last one, we just put a 0 at the end. And of course, like many word problems and tables of information, there was information in this table we didn't need to use. We didn't need to know the price of maple trees or rose bushes, did we? We just used the information we did need to use to solve the problem. Our next lesson, 4.12, is word problems, and we're going to do multi-step division word problems. I hope I'll see you there. Stay strong. Have a great day. Bye.